Ooh. So. Truly a game about intelligence and big brain activity with a community to match. For those of you who haven't been on a PC since 2008, Spore is a game about evolving from whatever this is to an intergalactic terrorist. This is down to five stages of creation going cell, creature, tribal, civilization, and finally galactic. Today's goal is quite simple. We're going to beat Spore, but we're going to beat it without dying. Before we go in, we need to make sure we understand the rules of the challenge and ask, what is death? Well, for Spore, that just means whenever my creature dies in the cell or creature stage, or whenever my village or city is destroyed in the late stages, I do not care for my followers or my troops. Their sacrifice means very little to me. So let's begin. We begin life as a grimy little amoeba on a grimy little asteroid as we crash into the murky waters of Fruitsville. We emerge from the rubble like a butterfly from its cocoon, except we have a beak and an insatiable rust to dominate the galaxy. Did I forget to mention we'll be doing this run with zero moral or ethic implications. Every creature, defenseless or strong, will be forced into oblivion. We will be doing this on hard difficulty. There will be no friends, there will be no peace, and there will be no chance to beg for mercy. We die literally not even two minutes in. Right, cool, very good. Did I mention it's been a while since I last played this game? We begin again on Vegestaville this time, with a very phallic creature. Perhaps Felicity is what we were missing last time. We scrounge, we scavenge, growing in size, we question the design choices of the dev team. Are these supposed to be like bubbles or snowflakes? The snowflakes doesn't make any sense, but bubbles don't look like this either. Unless they do. Maybe I'm tripping. And we struggle to use the big hitbox. If you haven't noticed by now, we progress and gain points by eating things. And for us, a carnival, that means murdering all these little scared cells. I take a bit of damage near a big googly-eyed monstrosity and get scared, escaping into the arms of my lover, Miguel. Oh, Miguel. His large stature and large utility keep me comfort. Now we enter the creature creator. This is basically a workshop where you can change the look and ability of your creature with these parts on the left. For now, most of the stuff is locked and we don't have any DNA points to spend anyways, so we just change up the shape a bit, attempt to make his mouth a little bit more usable, and finally add some gigantic face spikes. This will help us without genocide. I said we attempted to fix the mouth issues because, well, we made it worse. Despite this, like a true alpha species would, we spotted the largest cell in the sea. Holy shit and started stabbing it with our face spikes. It took a lot of stabbing, but eventually the beast fell. The passion in victory was evident. Oh, I'm actually the best this game. There's no way I'm dying. This is a zero death run. Riding the high of killing a large poison shrimp, I immediately threw myself into a swarm of smaller poison shrimp, took a bit of damage, and got so scared that my cell literally exploded from the stress. <laughs> This time we landed on Eggsville, where we followed pretty much the same tactic, getting face spikes as quickly as possible, calling a mate when everything got sticky, and we caught up to where we were previously. And died, poison shrimp, again. So we went back and landed on Yogurtsville, got enough DNA to evolve spikes, but this time we placed them on our butt instead. Butt spikes. In theory, nothing could kill us if they took damage trying to bite us from behind. And oh, how it worked. Double kill. Look at that! No, this is hacks. Or it's just pushing me through the ocean. Give me that. Give me that. No, just stay away. Hey, hey, I literally. This is literally your aunt. This is your aunt's bits, and you're eating it. We managed to evolve even more spikes, and I was beginning to think nothing would be able to kill us because we were literally covered. How could they? Oh my gosh! Not it. Not it, chief. Not it. Not it. <clears throat> the poison shrimp. I was beginning to realise this was a lot harder than I anticipated. I reloaded again, landed on Spoonsville, played more or less the same strategy, got to the stage with Poison Shrimp, and... beat it. Huh? I'd done it. Unexpected. Finally! Surely, the worst was behind me. Things couldn't get more difficult from here. But I'm gonna get there. If it's the last thing I do. <laughs> Unless that happens. What is that? <laughs> How is that fair? Keep things brief, I'd end up restarting another four times, dying mostly to these tube demons from hell with the occasional stress induced explosion. I would strip my tactic a little bit through my attempts, with my one viewer suggesting I spec it to speed and loosen up my dream of becoming a cellular sea urchin. Thin ice, dear viewer, thin ice. In the end, I took a little break. 
at this point, cell stage has proven to be pretty damn difficult, but I was confident that I was learning a little more with each attempt and getting a little better at avoiding the big bads. And sure enough, this next attempt would be much better than anything I'd done thus far. In fact, I wouldn't die for around 40 minutes straight, making it two and then some into the creature stage before realizing that my recording went kaput for no reason back during my second evolution in cell stage. This was rock bottom. Three hours and I'd made no progress. I shut off the stream and went to sleep for the night. Defeated and frustrated. I woke up the next day, started the stream and got back to it. And I was feeling good. I'd set up a second screen monitoring my recordings so I'd noticed if anything went wrong. And then I hopped in. I began selling. I was selling left and right, up and down, big and small. In fact, I sold so hard I could afford poison and butt spikes and extra eyes. I made the euphoric discovery that having poison made you immune to other cells poison, meaning I stormed the poison shrimp, consequently got to the tube demons and slipped right by them. At this point, I expected something to go wrong, and it did. Oh my. Not. I squeezed out of there like a bar of soap in a prison cell, managing to meet my sweet Miguel in the nick of time. None of that, none of that. That's way too close. Added another flagella and was out again, culling the weak populations of the late cell stage. These little bitey ones fell in the hundreds to my poison, and before I knew it, only 15 minutes into the stream, I'd done it. I grew a brain. Wow, this screen really doesn't do it justice. It was finally time to become sentient and create a creature that would truly grow to rule our planet. Where's cooking? <laughs> but he's cooking. That's exceptional, you know? He might be cooking. If I hadn't mentioned, I had the Dark Injection mod installed. It basically just adds a bunch of textures and parts, albeit in a bit of a glitchy way. It was time to make landfall. With their hats held tight, God's strongest creatures swam onto shore, ready to begin their reign of terror. In fact, the giraffe opted to simply expire rather than bear witness to what was about to take place. Our first neighbors, however, the Crocus, expected to having a rump of the situational awareness. What's all that movement back there? And so paid their annihilation. Spiky McFuse were next, having lent heavily onto the outdated meta of spikes, how very cell stage of them. Dream of becoming a cellular sea urchin. And finally the Groobies, they too had chef hats and so earned my respect, however they simply were not the protagonists of the story and so we relocated to the fossil records. Our brains were growing. A celebratory baby making was in order, after a bit of tweaking I decided the hats were off. It was time to get serious. We were also able to make a pack member at this point, and being true colonizers, we'd not be tolerating anyone outside of our original group, so I grabbed my meat shield and took him on his first killing spree. What's that? See, what the. That, what, there's just a skinwalker in the forest over there. After some time, it began to rain, so I dragged my companion back to our nest so I could be with Miguel through the storm. And after a blissful night in the sticks, the third generation of our species was born. And boy, was he kinda ugly. The whole nest up and left, seeing as it's kinda this guy's fault, they're all forced to root around wherever they go. We went ahead and killed this goofy looking one-legged dinosaur creature, and it proved our brains once again. Now every other nest I ran into seemed a little too strong for me to comfortably handle, so I just avoided them and made my way to the new nest collecting a load of bones on the way. After employing my second henchman, I felt a lot safer and went ahead and killed these guys, and then these guys, nearly, and then these guys, nearly, but it's okay because we went and killed the other guy we missed, the second guy we missed spawned so we killed him too, and after that it was once again time to evolve. I wanted to transition to four legs and after a bit of fiddling, he was produced. Which I thought was a big improvement, not that that's saying much, but wow, I felt like a predator with this thing. After reaching the final milestone before progressing to the next stage, I had even more health and an even larger pack, so I could really get to murdering. I rebuilt the boys and spotted a rogue that looked like that creature from Maze Runner if you've watched it. You know that, you know what I'm talking about, the big old spider thing. Of course, I had to stomp it out at the cost of my followers. I went into murdering some fights harder than others. 
Oh my gosh. And oh my big boy. It was time to evolve to two legs. So I did so, and I think we were looking very large indeed. I wanted more though. So I did some huge amounts of murdering and returned for the final rendition of our creature. Behold. Now worthy of taking over the galaxy, I decided it was perfect time to kill the biggest band around. My son. Him. Here's how it went. Yeah, okay, I'm not good enough for that. Let's 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 just move on. Ah yes, tribal stage. The silly ooga booga stage. Everyone just loves the little sticks and stone stage. Ooh yes, I cannot get enough. Me and the homies hate tribal stage. Beating the stage on hard without making any friends is very no good. It's not even hard, it's just very boring and formulated. Basically how tribal stage works, is more rival villagers spawn the further you get to the stage, and each one likes to raid you once every in-game day. And the only real way to destroy the enemy villagers is by waiting to get raided and then immediately counter-attacking while they don't have many troops left. If you position your troops away from a raiding party, the raiding party will actually encounter your building first and focus that instead of your tribe members, so you can kill them without worrying about taking any losses. Also, if you have near enough maxed out attack stats from the creature stage, you're actually better off not using any of the weapon types because things like charge and spit are way more useful. Very silly business. So for this entire stage, I basically just repeated the tactic I described as solid five times, and that was that. I did get caught up in a very aged loop of trying to counterattack either Cyan or Green, only for the other village to attack halfway through destroying the first, forcing me to retreat and restart the process. But being the goat, I did manage eventually. Stinky stage, zero digi doos out of ten. Oh boy. It's time. Civilization stage had my nuts quivering more than any other. I'd never really played the game this far before, and Civilization seemed like it required more brain than I currently have. But this was no time to back down, so I built up a town hall and gathered my people. I actually really enjoyed this cutscene, good job Maxis. I proceeded to spend an hour and 40 minutes producing some absolute top tier buildings and vehicles, which I will be slide showing right now. Enough silly business. If you hadn't noticed, I made two of each vehicle, and this is because in Civilization you can switch out the build of each vehicle at any moment, meaning I could design one speedy version of vehicle to get around, and then a much tankier damage dealing version for whenever they reached where they needed to be. Big brain. Before beginning, I'd spent a little time on a different save developing a strategy for how to beat the stage, so I was confident. It was time. Step 1, I'd create two boats and one land vehicle to capture the three surrounding geysers, maximizing my early game profits and giving me an immediate advantage. I also had time to destroy these two villages, awarding me some spore bucks and another land vehicle to work with. Very good start. Step 2, I'd use my newfound income to build up my city and an army in preparation for my first city takeover. This transformer so Optimus Prime. appeared from the brush and moved extremely suspiciously. So of course, I ended his life for ignorance of the hierarchy would not go unpunished. This would be my first mistake. A little while later, I had what I needed, and decided to begin my first raid. Now instead of choosing to fight the aggressive orange city before they were able to grow further and become a threat, I instead reduced my brain to, and then beyond, molecular size, and attacked the less developed, much friendlier green city, purely because it was closer by. If you couldn't guess, this was my second mistake. 
Almost immediately after attacking, a swarm of Transformers appeared in my city. My troops were preoccupied liberating green, so I was forced to handle this with just my two boats. I doubled down on turrets and tried to target one of the vehicles at a time. Too many boats have flanked my own, I was forced to devote my attention to them instead and... We captured the city. Hooray! I recalled my troops and cleared the invaders. It's been an honor serving with you all. Crisis averted. That was close, but now I finally had time to really get the ball rolling and prepare the next assault. Oh lord! The trans floaters were on their way. I was once again forced to divert all my resources into another defense, but it's okay. This was nothing that couldn't be handled. With the turret advantage, we were able to pick them off and... Oh. That's not good. Three waves of enemies in a row. I began to realize things could get dire. All I could do was defend and hope there wouldn't be another. A fourth wave came. And then a fifth. And then a sixth. There was nothing I could do. I was quite literally being held under siege, except I don't know how to outlast a siege. My choices were A, keep defending until they out-resource me and capture the city, or B, tactically sell everything in the city and develop my second city, letting them capture the first without wasting my money. I went for B. All I could do was watch the distraction. But it was okay. It was time for a fresh start. I could begin again and try things differently. This, this would be good. Let's, let's hope, let's hope that was a once-off. The same thing had started again. I would spend the next 30 minutes fighting for my survival. I tried everything. I sent troops to acquire geysers, I sent troops to attack other cities, I tried to divert their attention anyway, anything to sway things in my favour. I even created a third vehicle with the minimum speed and maximum combat ability possible to act as an almost stationary defence. But they were too many. My city was being whittled down, my geysers were depreciating in value and my grip on hope was loosening. I was out of moves. Except one, taking the offensive. That means murdering all these little scares. Next day, start up the stream. Go to strongest creatures, swam with the shore. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old days should burn and raise the close of day. The wise men of their end, no dark is right. Because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. If you're watching this video around the time of its release, you'll see this is the first one on my channel. I have no experience doing this kind of thing and it cost me my soul to make. So if this is the kind of thing you think you'd enjoy watching, please like, please subscribe, it's only my sanity at stake.